Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Istaib, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to talk to you about my practice and the few axes around which it's gravitating. Um, the first axis is uh, the time. When I um, knew I was coming here, I realized that in June 2019, it would be exactly 10 years since I graduated from STN. I did a diploma that was about uh, graphic and type design and also typography. And after that, I worked for a couple of years as uh, independent, but working uh, mainly with two studios, so it, di it didn't exactly feel like an independent practice. And then I worked at Dalton Mag as a type designer for about six years. And um, quite recently, in last November, I left uh, Dalton Mag to set up my uh, independent practice as a graphic and type designer. So uh, when I did my diploma at STN, I worked on a type uh, italic as a main um, <coughs> style for uh, running text, so uh, without a Roman. And uh, I did a system based on uh, structure variation, and I uh, did an essay to accompany this design about the evolution of italic as an independent form and then how it became the companion of uh, the Roman. Then at uh, Atelier Julien Legendre, I worked essentially for different uh, cultural institutions, designing uh, exhibitions um, and playing a lot uh, with type, uh, using type only at that stage. Uh, then I worked with Zoom Collective, which was a practice of uh, independent uh, designers, uh, architects, artists, uh, yeah, working on a vast range of projects. Here is an example of what we did together. This is an exhibition for which they designed uh, those uh, sort of uh, tables that become uh, boxes and uh, to carry the, the, the exhibitions uh, the exhibition around, and I did the graphic design for it. And then uh, was Dalton Mag. So my first uh, job as a type designer, I was completely junior when I uh, started there, where I worked essentially on uh, corporate custom typefaces uh, for both, uh, working on both Latin and Ar Arabic scripts, um, and also, yeah, uh, logo, logo refinement, retail fonts. And so um, when it was time to set up my in independent practice, I thought, okay, maybe I can uh, look back and uh, try to understand what are the positive of my experiences and uh, that I can try to reproduce and also what are the negatives that I can try to avoid. So I sort of... Uh, put in place a method of uh, reflection and uh, looking at those four eras of my practice and uh, wrote uh, down the positives and the negatives using uh, different uh, pastel colors. So I did uh, that a little bit in detail. And then I also looked at uh, a few iconic uh, projects, um, a custom uh, corporate typeface, um, a, a more like cultural and multi-script typeface, at quite the opposite of corporate, and then a workshop, <coughs> which took me to uh, the practice ax axis. I, I gathered all these uh, green post-it together, uh, stared at them for a while, um, reformulated certain things, uh, removed the overlaps, and uh, yeah, sort of like stayed with all of this for a while. and. <coughs> I started to analyze these uh, data, and I realized there are different uh, groups. One relate to what we could say um, the self, so where, where you're at as a human, as a person, and also with what uh, energy or attitude uh, you go into a project. Uh, then your purpose, so let's say the, the deeper level of what you're trying to do with your work, uh, what you're trying to communicate and <coughs> uh, a group was about more the process from uh, the early concept experimenting uh, stages to documenting, archiving the process and also uh, finally the, the practice block. So if we look at uh, a sectional plan of uh, this practice, you, you would have, let's say this outer axis would be the practice and then the process Although the process could eventually be outside, depending on projects and collaboration. 
time can affect these uh, areas quite, quite a bit. And then there is the purpose, and then I think quite at the center of what uh, we do is ourself. And then I was wondering uh, what is good work, what is worth uh, showing in a portfolio at a talk. And then mm, I was thinking, yeah, one, what you value the most in your practice plays a significant, significant uh, part, I think, is good work. So what is the most uh, valuable aspect of your work? And so then I, I stared again at my notes and uh, two, two stood out to me. Uh, can look at them at bigger sizes. Uh, they stood at me because I think, yeah, they are very important to me and also because a uh, lot of other important elements can, uh, you know, um, come under this, these two uh, blocks, which take us to the third axis. Um, and so, yeah, I think good work for me is at this top right uh, area. So let's look at the joy axis first. And uh, those are not necessarily uh, uh, related to specific projects, but are more a uh, theme that have been um, constantly uh, um, coming back in my, in my practice and uh, consistently uh, delivering joy. So collaborations first, from uh, collaborating with another fellow designer or more fellow designers specialized in different uh, things. Um, also collaboration with clients. Sometimes when you work on a custom project, uh, clients are very, very involved in the process and the shaping of this uh, typeface and it makes for a beautiful collaboration. And then one is, there is really a soft uh, spot for me is a multidisciplinary uh, collaboration. So at the top right is when we went with Collective Zoom, uh, installed this <coughs> exhibition that I showed you earlier, and you know, we, the, the, the fact that we did all of this uh, together was, uh, was really nice. And then uh, field work, so again on this idea of like, uh, uh, yeah, for doing the work on the computer and then following the work until it's like uh, in the outer world. And that happened a lot when I was uh, working with uh, Zoom, although it was just for a year, but uh, yeah, those are very uh, joyful uh, memory because it was many opportunity to exhaust my practice. Um, yeah, not in front of the computer. Another uh, important aspect is uh, mobility from uh, traveling, like being here today, or uh, traveling to a specific place where the place itself play a considerable uh, role in, in the project. Uh, and also, I very much believe that it's uh, the ability to uh, be mobile that took me from one experience to the, to the other in my, in my career. And uh, last but not least, uh, the idea of uh, experimentation. So really taking the time in the process of uh, playing around and like go a little bit wild in uh, what you explore. So this is uh, Mokoko, which is my uh, farewell retail uh, typeface for Dalton Mag. Uh, it was my uh, early uh, Latin design training, as we call it there, and uh, it stayed in the drawer for a while because we were very busy with work, and uh, we managed to finish it before I, I left, which was a great last thing to do. And um, in pink are all the exploration that I, uh, some of the exploration I did at the early stage of the project when I submitted it for the, for the library. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to make this like uh, sort of uh, slab family exploring different variation of slab between uh, Roman and uh, Italic. And I was thinking why not a more cursive or ionic Italic as companion of the, of the Roman? Because I really, uh, if there is one thing I'm not a big fan of, uh, slanted, slanted Roman for Italic. So everything in pink uh, disappeared and are not part of the final uh, work and the Italic is the slanted Roman. But uh, it didn't took away the fun I had uh, during that phase of uh, experimentation. Uh, and now the relevant axis. Uh, uh, um, a, a big one for me is uh, looking at type in context in the broadest uh, sense. Um, and everything I'm going to show from now are different variations uh, uh, around this idea. So. Um <coughs> Uh, legibility uh, and, and uses as a, the context uh, first. When I 
worked on Intel Clear Arabic at Dalton Mag. It was the, the first project uh, I, w I, I was leading as a designer, and because I was leading it, I was able to, uh, you know, ch choose uh, to propose my own uh, design paths. And um, uh, this is the Arabic font that uh, Intel was using before uh, to commission the, the, the custom Arabic. This is uh, uh, active by uh, Dalton Mag, and at that time a lot of the Arabic looked uh, in some ways uh, like that, and uh, this is Intel Clear. And so why they look so different is because they refer to a uh, different uh, calligraphic style. So uh, Tanzik uh, refer more to the Kufi, which is very uh, geometric uh, skeleton, and Interclear refer to the Nasr, which is uh, much more, uh, let's say, organic to simplify. And but most importantly, uh, Nasr is, is is the preferred uh, style for for text and continuous reading, and Kufi is more uh, um, a display style. So when you use Kufi, it's usually for uh, one line of text at uh, bigger sizes. So for the case of Intel, because the Latin was uh, uh, intended to, to work for both uh, display and text, uh, continuous reading very uh, comfortably, and also because uh, Intel had a very wide uh, audience in terms of uh, character, se like character uh, set and language cover. And um, for, for those reasons, it, uh, it made sense to, yeah, basically, start from um, the idea of really the, the, the context uh, of how the Arabic is going to be used to, 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 to design the, the, the font, rather than, uh, so this Kufi uh, approach has been uh, very trendy for um, uh, Arabic matching sans uh, Latin at the time because it, yeah, it had this like geometric um, feel and it felt like a good answer, however, what I, think is that um, Latin letter forms cannot be the context to designing uh, Arabic. And I'm uh, certainly not the only person to think that way, and it was a whole uh, bunch of designers working uh, like that, such as Christian Sarkis, uh, who was a consultant for this project, and also uh, Ferran Milan, which I worked with closely before uh, Intel. Um, qu quite far from a corporate, corporate project is uh, the idea of yeah, designing a multiscript for a specific uh, place. Uh, this is now a typographic uh, matchmaking uh, project that was created by Huda Abifares from the Hat Foundation. Um, the, the, the idea was to co uh, collaborate with different designers uh, to create a multiscript uh, typeface for Morocco. In Morocco, there are three scripts in use, the Arabic, the Latin, and the Tifina, which is the script for the Amazir uh, language, which uh, also it's the oldest language in the region, is official only since a uh, few years. And therefore, there are not much uh, typefaces uh, covering the three scripts. Um, they have a very different uh, history and evolution. The Arabic um, uh, script in, in the region evolved as the Maghrebi style, which is very uh, uh, lo local flavored uh, Arabic letter forms with this very flat base line and round counters. Uh, the Tifina, on the other hand, doesn't really have uh, like a manuscript evolution of its letter, of, of its letter form. So we, si since um, we, we have a jump from uh, you know, engraved, uh, traced in the sand letters to uh, a type, basically. And with my teammate, uh, Redouan Chetouan, we wanted to work with the, yeah, uh, observing like the, the fundamental differences uh, between the three scripts. So the uh, Arabic has a horizontal stress, the Latin is vertical, and the Tifina has this like skeleton uh, appearance. And we thought, what about uh, we uh, design each script in uh, those three uh, style and uh, using a common skeleton, and um, each of us will, you know, dress this skeleton with a, a, a different contrast. Uh, the first study trip was in Morocco, where we had this idea, and the second trip was in Andalusia, 
And uh, in Andalusia, we found a few very interesting uh, vernacular letters that were echoing quite strongly with uh, our project. And it, it sort of added this uh, poetic dimension of like um, culture and identities uh, swapping, you know, swapping contrasts like you would sw swap uh, clothes uh, with a friend somehow. Um, so this is uh, our project, the Tifina. It's Arabic and the Latin. Another uh, example of uh, thinking ab about type in uh, context is a project uh, I did some years ago uh, about Comic Sans. Um, there was this movie about Helvetica that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. Um, and my, my friend Guillaume, who is independent uh, film uh, director, uh, came to me and said, we need to make a movie about Comic Sans. And you know, I, we, what sounded as a joke at the beginning, uh, brought some very interesting uh, discussion about, you know, um, why is Comic Sans so popular among uh, non-designers and uh, why is there such a gap between the practice of uh, type design and, and then the wild um, world of uh, ty type users and uh, how can we perhaps make uh, bridges between, between those two worlds. So we decided to make a movie about Comic Sans, and, uh, which is basically a series of interviews with uh, amateur type critics, professional designers, and uh, the one and only uh, Vincent Connor. Um, the, the project is called We, we All Have Comic Sans. Um, another uh, concern of mine um, also about gaps is uh, the, the lack of knowledge about typographic rules uh, among uh, type users, and I don't blame the type users, I, I blame, I don't know, uh, maybe schools even, why not? Um, so in French, as uh, you might know, there are a lot of uh, accents, and uh, the rule is if you write a text in capital letters, you have to use the accented letters. And uh, yeah, I wanted to make a project uh, around that. So I, I used this idea for a workshop that I did in uh, Tumo, uh, Paris. Tumo is a center for uh, teenager. It's an uh, after-school holiday uh, free of charge program where you can uh, come and learn and uh, about yeah, design and uh, new technologies. Uh, it's a concept that comes from uh, Armenia. The first center is in Yerevan. I will talk about that later. And they opened the center uh, yeah, a few months ago really in Paris and I I got to do a workshop there. So because it's uh, quite new, the, the, the teenagers don't have much experience yet in, uh, in design. Um, but yeah, the, the, the purpose of the workshop was look at uh, 20th century uh, French poster. So there was also a bit of initiating, you know, history of French uh, graphic design. Um, extract uh, letters from, uh, from, from those posters. Some so it's uh, like, yes, sort of uh, revive those letters, let's say, uh, make a sketch and then make a digital version of it. And uh, then make a little, po uh, little type poster uh, with, with your letters. Uh, and those uh, French words that they used for the poster had to have either accented letters or uh, ligatures, another uh, forgotten of uh, um, yeah, typographic rules. So this is what Dan did based on the s same poster, just a lot cooler than in my example. Um, <coughs> then this is Kim uh, work. And yeah, they really had to uh, invent their own solution for, 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 for integrating the accent as really part of their, uh, their piece. Uh, this is the work of Ferrada, who had like nice solution for the for the U diuresis. And then uh, this is uh, the workshop we did with my uh, ex colleague still friend Ricardo De Franceschi in uh, in Tumo uh, Yerevan that I was mentioning earlier. Um, our workshop uh, at, and so at Tumo, uh, also the you know it's an audience of teenager. They 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 are also have like a rather solid experience of, uh, of design, which is funny to say about teenager, but it's, it's quite true. 
Um, so in Armenia, um, the flea market of Yerevan, we found some like a very beautiful uh, um, lettering manual from the uh, Soviet era, and a uh, lot of uh, we collected a lot of other samples of Armenian letters. And the purpose of the workshop was to um, initiate this idea of matchmaking uh, scripts, and they had to draw Latin letters based on, based on those Armenian uh, models. And um, the idea was to work on uh, with uh, like Armenian expressions uh, for the word. Armenian is a very um, beautiful language, f like with very uh, rich, uh, tragic, uh, funny uh, um, expressions, and we, yeah, we wanted to like c c celebrate uh, the Armenian language. So th they, the output was to make a postcard, and at the back of the postcard would be the explanation of uh, that quote. And uh, okay, so from 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 that, po that point, I had. Uh, a uh, rather good idea of like what are the problematics uh, that I want to keep pushing on my independent practice. Also a good idea of like what uh, gives me joy and what, is, what feels relevant in my practice. But I had still something uh, to look at was uh, is there a pattern for a negative output? So I uh, collected this time the yellow, uh, the yellow notes. And yeah, I think uh, there is very much a pattern uh, for a negative output. And it has been, in my case, es essentially due to either uh, lack of time, lack of uh, mobility, lack of diversity, or even uh, lack of sleep. And so I started to like put those data together and, 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 and put the positive notes around and, and, and see if there was already you know, link that could be done and if the solution to avoid that was already there. Uh, and yeah, there was uh, clearly a pattern of like uh, sedentarity that has uh, been um, yeah uh, uh, an issue in my in in, in my career. Um, and so those are some examples of what can be done about that. Um, and making sure I keep collaborating with uh, non-designer and uh, designer for different discipline. <coughs> and then, yeah, really uh, make a point on uh, having a diverse uh, practice. Uh, trust is also a very important element uh, of, of, of work, uh, uh, trusting the uh, people you collaborate with, trusting uh, your client, but also trusting yourself. If you don't trust yourself, you make it quite hard for others to trust you. So this is also an area uh, of work that can be done. Uh, well about stress and tiredness, that a good uh, solution is definitely good sleep and self-care, which are, those have been uh, added later on when looking at those negative notes. And then there was, uh, yeah, uh, dealing with tight deadlines, which is uh, sort of inevitable. And uh, that has definitely been a problem for me when I was uh, studying, essentially. But then I really, and at Dalton Mag as well, more because uh, there was a rhythm of like high pressure pretty much constantly, at least for like a good chunk of my time there. And, um, but then I realized one thing that I really don't like about deadlines is, is the word deadline. I always uh, pictured it as an axis uh, on which there is a line and then if you cross it, you're dead. And I definitely uh, died a few times. Uh, and, and, and I think a very good solution to avoid uh, dying again is to work on projects with different or no deadlines. So have a sort of like very um, various uh, rhythm of uh, projects and also work on things that, yeah, are not commissioned and you can spend work on and maybe reopen something that stayed in the drawer for years. And so that took me to uh, my last point, uh, shifting away from the axis. I, um, last, year, last uh, week, sorry, I went to a very beautiful uh, conference um, where um, Anna Bitterhovind um, from Oslo was uh, giving a very moving uh, talk about time. And she said uh, that phrase that really uh, stayed with me, we need to start thinking about time as a landscape rather than a linearity. And as I was uh, yeah, meditating on this uh, phrase, it, uh, it made me realize that uh, 
linearity more than time is, 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 the, is the really negative uh, thing for me and that this has been, uh, yeah, this negative uh, pattern in, 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 in my practice and that if my practice and my process are linear, then I lose a sense of uh, purpose and self. So I decided to look at things a little bit differently and maybe see my practice as this uh, open landscape with a lot of different uh, shapes and uh, paths. And uh, maybe um, if I look at things that way, my practice itself can become relevant. Uh, and then uh, joy uh, is there as well. And uh, the purpose. So I hope my reflection on my practice echo with yours. Uh, let's respect and cherish the time we have, the time things take. Let's stretch the time we enjoy the most. And to finish, I just want to share a few uh, advices um, to stay connected to joy and make work that is relevant. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs>